T7, Portfolio Hedges. That's this final video here under the Titanium module. Um, before I summarize the whole uh, entire module as a complete lesson. And I did recap and already talk about this one in the management section as far as uh, gap risk and hedge protections, but I just want to make another uh, separate video about the uh, my opinion and view on hedges and protecting accounts, all right? If you are trading less than $50,000, which what I am doing on accounts that I am managing that are under $50,000, I am not personally using any hedges or any account protections because my opinion and my philosophy is the, the risk of blowing a large account, if you're if you blow a $50,000 account and that's all the money you have scraped together for 10 years in trading, then absolutely please protect that. If a $50,000 account is, I don't want to use the word insignificant because that's, that's a terrible implication. It's not an insignificant amount of money, but uh, you're not going to be full-time trading with a $50,000 account. Okay, so I think that this conversation is a lot more important and a lot more valid when you're trading with several hundred thousands or even a seven-figure account. You absolutely have to hedge your account against gap risk, black swan hedges. If you, if you put at jeopardy 50% of your account and you're trading a $500,000 account and you're going to put 50% of it at risk if a 10% move happens overnight and the market closes for three days and there's nothing you can do about it, that is reckless and um, unwise in my opinion. If you're trading a $50,000 account or say you're trading a $30,000 account, you probably are um, not, you're not going to be happy, but you're probably not going to have a significant lifestyle change if you lose 50% uh, of that account in a black swan type move. Furthermore, the barrier is if you're trading, let's say you're trading right here, a $20,000 account, I suggest and still recommend you are always staying 40% in cash. So if you've deployed $12,000 of that, unhedged funds for trading, and you lose 50% of that, well, you've lost $6,000 of your $20,000 account, and you will not be happy about that. No way, no shape, no how. I would not be happy about that. However, it would not blow my trading account. And while a you know 12% loss in one day would not be the end of the world, I think what will happen is you would be able to concentrate and focus more on the actual trading instead of obsessing so much about hedging just perfectly, all right? And if you're trading, if you start out trading twenty or thirty thousand, and you get pretty skilled at trading without worrying about all the hedging that goes on with it, then when you're trading a hundred or two hundred or more, well, then you can begin to say, "I have confidence in my trading abilities. Now let me um, get confident in how I'm going to hedge this overall account so that I don't jeopardize." a much larger monetary loss. All right, so I hope that makes sense. I'm, I'm trying to explain that the best way I can. But um, small accounts, I don't bother with hedging. Large accounts, absolutely you have to hedge. So, um, and the way you'll do that, again, is these are just suggestions. These are um, guidelines to get you started, how I hedge, and it's a percentage amount of all your aggregated trades that are active that are at risk in the market all right and so you can use weekly options monthly options you can roll these around um, there are three different choices and again I went in uh, a little bit more detail uh, one of the prior videos I'll, I'll go and show some examples again here but you know you have three different choices ratio spreads out of the money debit spreads right at the money out of the money puts there are many different choices you are not trading these hedges to try and make money on them. You're using them to protect against a catastrophic loss. That 
you know, Black Monday 1987 crash that 30% of the market just, you know, dissolves overnight over a few days over, you know, a September 11th type event where the market closes for many days and there's nothing you can do. That's what we're trying to um, protect against so that if we have no capability of uh, adjusting or of making any trade maneuvers, we know we're not going to lose 50% of our account, okay? And the, the tactics and the strategies that you're going to learn, that you're going to practice to get skilled at that, um, are probably going to fall into one of those three categories, all right? Um, your maximum loss, you're willing to lose 100% of that debit you paid unless you're rolling it from week to week. You may say, all right, I'm going to put everything in one expiration cycle and I'm protected. I have my hedges on and I keep it on for a week. And then as I get ready to roll it into the following week, I may capture a little. It may not be 100% of a loss, but you're still rolling it to the subsequent week to protect your overall portfolio. Okay, no adjusting whatsoever. They are intended to protect capital and preserve against a catastrophic loss. It's less important when your account is small. It's mandatory when your account is big. All right, so let me just go ahead and show you how to set some of those up. This is the SPX grid, all right? And we are looking at monthly expiration cycles. I can also look at weeklies. And we're going to use out of the money large the puts. We'll hit OK. And I can say, let's, we'll use the proverbial $100,000 trading account. Say I want to hedge a $100,000 trading account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate a half a percent of that towards my active trades. So if I've got 60 or say $75,000 worth of trades and I want to uh, hedge those and protect those. All right, so 75,000 times 0 0.05 is, uh, we're going to say, and actually it's 0 0.005. I'm going to spend about $375 to hedge that, all right? So if I want to come and we'll just say write either options expire 10 days or 17 days, 30 days, you know, whatever the choice may be, if I want to, um, say I'm going to do a ratio spread, all right? Well, let's just say that I am going to, uh, I want to spend $375, so I'm going to come right here and, I don't know, let's say maybe I'm going to sell two of these and that's going to cost me 1000 and I'm going to buy three of these because that's going to cost me 600 um, It may be a little different ratio, but you get the idea. So that's going to cost me $281 to hedge that and let's see what happened here. That's what it's going to give you the risk profile. And again, this is not designed to try and make money. This is designed to protect against a catastrophic loss. So I could even say, well, maybe I'll come right out the money. I'll do two here. It's going to generate a credit of $4,900 into the account. Well, if I do three of those or say four or five of those, it's going to, there we go. So now that's going to debit me $340, but there's my hedge, right? I've got unlimited, uh, it's going to protect me to the, to the downside. And yet this T plus zero line is still relatively flat. And for the next 30 days, if it rallies to the upside, I, I make $340. I'm not going to lose anything. And if if it happens overnight or say in the next, uh, I'm going to change colors. It's a little bit easier to see. I like, I like red. Red or blue, there we go. That's fine. Um, so let's say over the next eight days and we drop a little bit, but we don't have a big giant move. Well, I may lose two or three thousand dollars on this hedge if it dropped down in this area here. So that's why you have to manipulate the strikes so that if you're going to roll it, you are um, not going to, you know, you don't want to lose any more than that, what we say, three hundred seventy five dollars uh, every week to protect the larger trading account. 
and that's just a cost of doing business. You have to allocate that into your trading plan. If I'm trading a $100,000 account and 75,000 is at risk and I'm spending $375 a week to hedge it against this, you know, uh, <laughs> All right, if I've got a $75,000, if I've got a $100,000 account and I've got $75,000 deployed into the market and we get a 30% gap down and there's nothing I can do to protect against it, 30% uh, move down in SPX, I would make $242,000 for this hedge right here, this ratio spread. So again, you're not trying to use this as an income producing vehicle or a growth uh, method you're using this to hedge and protect it's a, a cost of doing business uh, to hedge and protect your larger account and what you're what you're the credit you're generating by selling two of these at the money you're financing the the sale uh, or let me let me say it a different way the purchase of these all right so if I got rid of that the purchase of these this forty six hundred dollar purchase I'm financing it by selling two or three or you know whatever the amount may be you could come in here and if I sold one or if I came even deeper and sold one here uh, you know buy five here buy seven here do something like that there you go that's it that's a much better example so I bought eight out of the money options paid uh, essentially six thousand dollars out of my account and I'm financing it by selling one of these in the money all right well now that's what I've got I've got that hedge to the downside against unlimited loss I will never lose my hundred thousand dollar trading account if we have a black swan uh, type event 30 percent market correction meanwhile if over the next eight days we do nothing we just hang kind of sit around and hang around here you know Yes, I'm going to lose two thousand dollars, so I need to I need to adjust the strikes and the sale so that um, I'm not losing more than that three seventy five a week. All right. Again, that's just a starting point. It's up to you to to work these numbers towards what works best for you. Um, debit spreads at the money and out of the money puts are another method that you can use. Um, the debit spreads right at the money if you were to go something like this same kind of thing you know you're going to have um, you're gonna take a loss on let's see let's say we do this right here you know we're gonna we're gonna realize a loss of five hundred twenty seven dollars but we're hedged only up to a peak of forty five hundred so you know uh, this is not a really an ideal hedge, but it is a way to say if I don't want to keep rolling and maneuvering around, I could uh, either come right at the money with the strikes or I could go farther out of the money and um, use that as a hedge for defined risk. And then the last one is just the purchasing the out of the money. If I'm going to say I want to spend $375, I could either buy one of these. I could come out here and I could say, well, I want to buy three of these and what that gives me is this kind of a risk profile all right so I've got a defined risk of three hundred twenty one dollars for the next thirty days if we get that thirty percent move down you know make a hundred thousand uh, to protect my account again all kinds of variations this will probably be the simplest way to hedge a larger portfolio um, without getting into the conversation of you know buying VIX calls and other you know there are a myriad of ways to hedge and protect your portfolio but these are the three simplest ways the simplest way is obviously buying the out of the money puts uh, the next one would probably be to do the ratio spreads and the last would be the at the money debit spreads so again to recap we're using a liquid vehicle that's going to be actively traded we're going to allocate a certain percentage of capital every single week or every few weeks to protect the amount of trading money that we have at risk in the market okay and if you do that uh, you'll be able to sleep at night all right while you're trading so this concludes this video I will have one more final video summarizing um, all of the uh, 
all of these videos here, right? So all these video lessons that are in here that you've just been watching, you know, multiple hours worth of me talking. Um, you have access to all of these PDFs for for the core income and growth trades, for some directional trades, talking about you know just a bunch of different material, and uh, I hope that you find that it's been valuable. In addition, this is to augment the one-on-one -on -one sessions that we're already doing. All right, so um, you will always have access to this, and uh, don't hesitate to send me off any kind of feedback if something I've said in any of these videos either doesn't make sense or uh, I could have said it or articulated it a little bit clearer. Okay, so thanks much for listening and watching, and uh, we'll wrap this up here in the next video lesson below.